when you're ready. Hi there. Uh, this is an instructional video and also hopefully an informative video on the use of the time block. Patent applied for, of course. Uh, we've got a guitar here which is actually a wonderful representation of the level of skill and work that we do here at the Guitar Repairers. Young James has rebuilt this guitar, the entire soundboard, from, well, I can't really describe just how bad it was. But I think there's some photos you may be able to have a look at. Someone sat on it, a big person actually sat on this guitar. The, the outcome has been brilliant. It's <laughs> chimey, big and round and fat. There's only one thing is that now that this guitar has been built, reinforced, cleated, it's had everything that can be done to it, I am concerned that it being a cedar top, that it may still have a propensity for warpage, and certainly around the bridge area. Now this is where the tone block comes in, not just for the tonal representation or improvement, but also by taking the weight off the entire area directly around the bridge. Now, if I can find one. Ah. This is the tone block. It's an amazing little device, I must admit. It's taken some years of development. It's designed to be a natural resonator. In plain words, it gathers the energy of the string and in doing so, actually acts like an enhancer. It pushes more string energy out to, out to the soundboard. So we're wanting to radiate this energy here we want to end up here it doesn't always happen in all guitars it's one of the reasons that some guitars sound thin it's uh, it's also a reason reason that some guitars tend to have more fret rattle for no particular fault or no particular misalignment of frets the idea is to get this energy and get it out here rather than that energy feeding back if you like going straight back up the strings and causing excess rattle and thin tone. Now the next part of this video will be actually talking about the fitting of one of these little tone blocks and how you can do it yourself at home. So number two, let's go. The first thing we're going to do is we're, we're going to remove the old strings off the guitar. By the way, you'll notice that I use a pair of side cutters and just get under and pop them. I see people using everything from a teaspoon to a knife to people cutting their fingers, messing up their bridges. We don't want to do that. So, tone block, we need it to fit under here. It's held in by the tension of the string. So what we're going to do to actually get this guy in there and located, it's pretty straightforward. Feed a string through. I'm sure anyone with a, a hand, and if they've got a hand the size of a giant, they won't have any trouble getting it through. Now, there's a, I've put a kink in that with the eyelet facing the bend. Pop this little bridge pin in there. I'm now going to do the same thing on the other side. A little bit of a kink. And... Like so. We're going to pop the string on. As you can hear, the string is going on. We need to do a small screwdriver. You can even use something like a little art skewer, like this, to basically go down and make sure everything's aligned. Perfect. Again, a kink in the right place. It goes down, hooks in, voila. Again, a kink with the eyelet facing through, voila. This will be up in one second because of my incredible Lee. Now, last little friend, boom. As you can see, it's not that hard. As you can see, no need for bridge pins, but you can put them in if you want. So, I mean, so you can always put them back in there. Lovely. Everybody happy. So.